I've been a chemical engineer all my life. This is my passion. This is what I like to do. And specifically, one of the things that I like about chemical engineering is applying the chemical engineering knowledge to solving environmental problems. Our research is ultimately applied to a, to a specific objective, and I, I like both aspects of it. You know, to be able to do the very fundamental, but at the same time thinking of the practical problem that we can solve as engineers. Connecting complex research outcomes to attainable solutions is what drives University of Arizona distinguished professor Eduardo Saez. Based in the Department of Chemical and Environmental Engineering, he is part of a legion of increasingly relevant engineers confronting environmental challenges. If you believe the climate forecasts, and they're the best that humans come up with, um, it's going to get hotter and drier here in the southwest and presumably dustier as well. And if that dust is contaminated, um, as it is near mining operations with lead or arsenic, then people are going to be breathing more of it. So it does have those direct public health implications. Saez and his colleagues have been sampling atmospheric aerosols from Arizona's Hayden Mine. They are looking to better understand the sources and transport of airborne contaminants. Another issue with consequences for human health is water reuse. He and his students are investigating the viability of advanced oxidation applications to remove trace contaminants that slip through current treatment processes. This is the uh, uh, wastewater effluent from the plant, so this is the treated wastewater before disinfection. The concentrations are not that high okay, that, okay. you know, you drink this water and you're going to, for example, it has uh, Tylenol in it, but it won't cure your headache or caffeine. But the pharmaceuticals, though, at very small concentrations still have an effect. And some of the compounds, for example, have, uh, have uh, done damage to fish in rivers. So it's just, you know, very small. Conventional treatment does remove some of the endocrine disruptors, but people have noticed that things like bisphenol A and then even um, the hormones that are found in birth control are still bypassing conventional treatment. So there's some worry about what's uh, it being passed on when it goes down to, into the ground to the aquifer, because that's going to be obviously your drinking water later on. You know, it's a lot cle clearer now. And yeah, it's got a little bug on top. Got some. <laughs> that one is treated, and you can see the difference. This collection of data is aimed at building a foundation for more effective water purification. And for that, you need chemistry. So you need to have a, a chemistry, a chemical process that can destroy these contaminants. But the challenge for us is not to design that process in itself or the mechanism, but to take that to practice. As a discipline, chemical engineering emerged from the petroleum industry. Saez grew up in Venezuela, where petroleum is an economic mainstay. My family actually uh, are from Europe. So uh, my mother is from Spain, my father is from Italy, and uh, they still live in Venezuela. And uh, I have a very large family spread over different countries, and, and I was the the first to get a, a university education. At the interface. Now we're going to talk about momentum balance, so we're going to talk about the jump momentum balance. A passionate teacher, Saez's fundamental mission is to empower the next generation of chemical engineers. There are infinite normals to align in space, right? I've always been interested, interested in teaching. Uh, from when I was an undergrad, just receiving education and looking at people that could sit down with you for an hour, yes, and after that, so I can throw away. you would have a knowledge for the rest of your life. I, I thought that that was uh, an admirable profession. Now, let's do C2. It's to tough material that he teaches, but he's able to do it, and he's able to explain it really, really well. It's part of his nature. It's nothing that you can fake. You know, he really is interested in the students and educating them, broadly speaking, and advancing their careers. It's actually been really pretty steady. He is a strong advocate for students helping to solve real-world problems. I, I think it's very important to, to, for them to have this experience because they gain so much uh, from this type of work. They also can make the direct connection between 
their engineering courses or their engineering education and what goes on in the real world. He's a really good university pre professor rather than a government research uh, scientist or engineer or industry where you don't get the contact with the students. This is his home.